Hello homeschoolers, it's Melissa Webb and welcome to Homeschool is a Work of Heart. In this series, you're going to be listening to veteran homeschoolers who have great advice on all sorts of topics like, oh yes, socialization skills, but also reluctant learners and how to help them, how to homeschool multiple children. If these are topics that interest you, I would like to invite you now to enjoy the conversation. Well, welcome back. We are doing a homeschool interview series. Whether this is your first one or your fifth one, we're just happy that you're here. You obviously have uh, some curiosity about the homeschooling world and life. And today I am so excited to introduce you to Marissa Benavidez, who is a homeschooling mom of two, I believe, but we'll let her go into that. Hello, Marissa. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. How are you today? Good, good. Thank you for having me. Oh, so happy you're here. Thank you for your time as well. So let's start with just learning a little bit about you. Give us a little bit of your life, your history, your background. We are located in Southern California. We have two kids. Our oldest just graduated high school, um, public school. Um, our youngest is 11 and I have been homeschooling him for, this will be our fourth year. Um, that's really it. So what I actually love that you just said, and this hasn't even come up in the series yet, you have a child that's going to the brick and mortar kind of public school Mm -hmm. and you're also homeschooling. This is a hybrid that I am hearing more and more and more about, and it's exactly what we did as well. Because yeah. I think everybody needs to hear that homeschooling really depends on the individual child. It depends on the grade or the year that you're looking um, to homeschool. And it can be a mix of so many things. There's not a right or a wrong way to do it. So I yeah. love that you just mentioned that. Now, your oldest son, did, did you ever homeschool him or was he already on that path? No, he started in the public school. Um, we always questioned, maybe we should pull him out. Maybe it's time. And I think it was just a scary move, um, especially for me, because I was like, well, <laughs> I'm not credentialed. <laughs> I don't want to mess this kid up. <laughs> um, but then there's there's about a seven and a half year gap between them. So okay, um, when when our youngest started, um, things were starting to change in the public school system. Things that um, safety concerns, um, moral concerns, mm -hmm. things that they were going to start implementing about what they were going to teach that just was not on our page of OKs. Yes. And for our older son, he was already in high school. So we'd already, he already was like a sponge and soaked everything up that we had taught him. and he knew right from wrong and what we believed and what we didn't believe. Um, so we just thought, okay, well, we're going to pull our youngest out because now it's time. And I, I just wasn't comfortable anymore with him in the public school system. And, and I was in the classroom quite a lot because I was nervous about safety concerns. And then I don't know what you're going to be saying to my kid anymore. Like now I just don't trust the system. Yes. And I don't want him coming home asking me questions that weren't appropriate for a six-year-old to be asking. Um, so with that being said, we just, you know, we knew our oldest was good to go and he was already set, excuse me, set in his ways. Um, but for our youngest, we were just like, mm -mm, too young. Um, he's going to question things that just, he shouldn't even be thinking about it at this age. So right. we, we pulled him out and it was scary, like but it was good. <laughs> oh, for sure. Scary. And we're going to talk yeah. about that. You know, I like that you just said, you know, it was the system like you recognize, like, I always want to be so careful to mention that there are amazing teachers out there, amazing mm -hmm. teachers out there yeah. whose hands are tied, who have administrators, even great administrators uh, who are all being told from the higher ups, the, it is the system. It's yeah. this institutionalized 
you know, compulsory way of learning and education that's really dirtying the waters. And um, it is making it so that, I mean, like I have friends who are teachers that are like, I'm ready to retire. I thought I would work another five years, but not like this, I'm not going to. So, right. so yes, I think we're all seeing that. And um, yeah, very good point. And so, yes, you, you said a couple things. So you said, I didn't want to miss, mess up my kid. I'm not credentialed. I was really scared. Mm -hmm. I love that you're so vulnerable and honest in sharing that, Marissa, because I think anybody new to homeschooling, if you yeah. care, if you care about your child's future, <laughs> you're going to feel those feelings because yes. it matters to you because your child matters to you. Um, you know, I teach writing and I get emails from parents who actually feel guilty that they can't um, fill that. They, they're like, I don't feel like I'm a good enough teacher for writing. And I always come back and say, can I just say you're actually one of those great moms who's not trying to be superwoman, that you have to do everything. I mean, resource, right? And we're going to be talking about that today, the planning, the must-haves, some of some of the out-of-the-box teaching mm -hmm. um, that you learn. But I just want to thank you for being so honest about that. So that first year, was it scary? It was because it's kind of like the saying, like you got thrown into the wolf's den and you're like, um, okay, you know, because there's so many different ways to homeschool. You can homeschool through a charter, which is the route we chose to, to do. Cause I thought, well, at least I'll have some guidance. Yes. I'll have, you know, your teacher to help guide me and say, mm, not a good idea, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> or you could homeschool completely on your own and just maybe let Google be your best friend and you research and you try to figure it out or you talk to other homeschool moms. Um, but the charter school really helped. Um, I had a, our first year, we had a great teacher. You know, you always have that first teacher, kind of like the kindergarten teacher at a brick and mortar. They set the bar. Right? Yes, do, and it seems do. like no one ever seems to meet that bar. Wow. <laughs> um, so that's what happened with us. We had a great teacher. She really just she aligned with everything we believed and um, she knew her stuff curriculum wise. And um, she really talked to our son and said, okay, I think we're going to take it easy. And we're just going to say maybe just one page a day of this or a couple questions over here. Plus he was only going to be in second grade. So it wasn't like a high school curriculum, you know, honestly, yeah. but um, yeah, so that was, it was hard. It was scary. And you learn a lot the first year of, kind of learning that didn't work well, or that curriculum didn't work well. Um, I don't think that there's a bad curriculum out there. I think it's just whatever works for your child. And that's what is the hard part as the parent teacher is you need to figure out how does my child learn best? Yes. And maybe that curriculum just isn't for him. Correct. Correct. Okay. So again, you're, you're unpacking so many good things, Marissa. <laughs> so I love that in California, uh, we're, we're very fortunate as a state, as far as uh, we have so many charter schools there. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're listening and you're in another state and you're like, what are you talking about? You joined a charter school. What does that mean? So in the state of California, charter schools are public schools. Mm -hmm. They are public schools but they support families that want to homeschool by providing a credentialed teacher to meet with you monthly to like uh, Marissa was saying, review what you've done, what needs to be done according to standards. Um, so you don't have as much freedom, but you sure have a whole lot more freedom than you would in, you know, a campus type uh, brick and mortar right. traditional classroom right. setting of 36 kids or something like yeah. that. So it's a really great option, mm -hmm. um, as well as your tax money that goes into the school system comes back and you get funding that you can use educationally. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's certainly a benefit too. I, I'm a big supporter of our charter schools and we need to fight to keep them um, because they really are amazing. And, and you're right, like what a great thing that you had that support person there. And what you said about curriculum too. It's not a, that a curriculum is good or bad. 
Mm-hmm. It's, it's, does the curriculum fit or does it not fit? Okay. So you're like all homeschool moms that I, that I know, Marissa, we start to talk and it becomes all about your kids and your curriculum. <laughs> but I want to know a little bit more about you. Like, um, did you grow up thinking like someday I'm going to homeschool my kids? Like what were, what was your life no. growing up? My education was, what com- were your dreams? <laughs> yeah. My education was completely public school. And there was, I did not have the parents that questioned anything or do you need help with anything? Or I came home and said, Hey, I don't get this. Like there was none of that. It was completely on the school, on the teachers. Um, they just made sure I was getting good grades. And if I didn't, there was a punishment. (laughs) I mean, like that was it. Um, so with that being said, with, with my two boys, we just decided as parents, no, we are going to be involved over the top, maybe too much. I'm going to get on your nerves. I'm going to go through your backpack. I'm going to go through your binder and I'm going to sign up for everything that the school wants to send me. And I'm going to be at the parent meetings, <laughs> So, love you know, because just, um, there was, uh, I don't know if it was the generation or I was just afraid to say, Hey, you know, I rather not be embarrassed in class and say, Hey, I don't get it. Um, and I certainly can go home and say that. So with our boys, I just wanted to make sure they knew, Hey, it's okay to not understand something. There's so many resources to figure it out if I cannot. (laughs) So let's be open and on the same page with everything. Um, and as far as me, I just, there's plenty of time for me time. You have to make that time, you know, to exercise, to sit down and read, to, just go outside and have a cup of coffee by yourself. Um, and hopefully not always just reading curriculum or oh, no. reading a homeschool book, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully reading for True. pleasure. And, yeah. No, I got sucked into the book club book. <laughs> oh, good. Good. <laughs> it was a great book. He was like, mom, I need to read my chapters. I'm like, please hold. I'm, I'm not there. Yet. <laughs> I want to join you in that. <laughs> so funny. It was That's a good funny. book. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely, um, you know, we like to hike. I love cooking. So you just find the time. You do. And I think that is something that homeschooling parents new to it are afraid. Like, well, if I become a homeschool parent, there goes my life. Like nothing about me anymore. It's all about my kids. And you know what? That can be true no matter what, if you choose it. But at the same yeah. time, I feel like homeschool moms get good at planning their mm-hmm their days. <laughs> yeah. Therefore, they actually plan in time to, you know, schedule a time to go have a coffee with a girlfriend they haven't seen for a while mm-hmm. or go get a manicure, you know, on a Saturday morning and quiet time. Like, yeah, it can be done. It completely can be done. In fact, sometimes better because you yeah. are more intentional and time doesn't mm-hmm. slip away for yeah, sure. Exactly. Well, good. That is really good. Um, okay. So we're going to talk about homeschool planning, mm-hmm. the things that maybe you think uh, new homeschooling moms really should have, um, and any out of the box things that you have learned along the way. Um, in the what did you say four years? This is this yeah, we've yeah. been homeschooling for four years. So um, planning in the very beginning was very like I thought I had to be like a credential teacher like okay I got the teacher planner I ordered it here it is I put it in and I followed the curriculum to the T you know lesson one has to be done by this date on this day and by the end of the semester you should have all of this done and um, I was having him do all of every question and it was a lot and I was overwhelming myself and Tim so now planning is a week in advance. And depending on the subject, um, like for math, we'll just do a week because, um, if he doesn't understand something, right. How can I plan for a month or even the full semester or year? Um, now with our writing class, we have a full month of planning (laughs) It's done for us, (laughs) which is lovely. Um, but yeah, it just depends on the subject. Most of the time I just plan a week for math, um, language arts, can usually go a little bit further, but I don't, I'm not as serious as I was or crazy about needing to have it planned out. 
Yes. You know, are we hitting our goals? Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Are you retaining it? Great. Then we can move on. Oh, so good. Okay. I love this. I love this because so having worked in a classroom, um, there I had different administrators and some required um, a semester overview of what we were going to be covering, uh, which was always nice because that was a little looser, where mm -hmm. As others, and I had friends who had principals who every Friday you had to have your lesson plans mm -hmm. um, for the month, like laid out. And yeah. it's why classroom teachers, I feel, um, and, and they're, you know, they're kind of between a rock and a hard place. Kids don't understand a concept. So sorry, but we're moving on. Did you not mm -hmm. see my lesson plan book? <laughs> Right. Like my principal believes I'm going to be on this chapter by this right. month. Therefore, I do not have time mm -hmm. to change this. And right. that is very different. And it should look so, so much different in a home school. Mm -hmm. It should be more like I, like I'm on, I'm on your bandwagon, Marissa. Mm -hmm. And that's how I did it with the boys when I homeschooled. When I planned as a homeschool mom, it looked very different than when I homeschooled as a classroom teacher. Yeah. And you don't know at the end of the week, are you going to be ahead of where you wanted to be or behind? So yeah. you have like this, you know, loosey goosey, like I always teach. And, and it is a course that I offer for free is that homeschool planner challenge mm -hmm. that is just kind of a loose, hey, let's just make some good plans for the year. So you kind mm -hmm. of have the overview, but we don't have to be so descript because mm -hmm. that would stress, I think a stress would stress a lot of homeschool moms out. But I'm also curious to ask you like the other end, I know there are some homeschool moms who like, they just get their books mm -hmm. and they sit them on the desk and Monday morning comes and they're like, okay, um, hang on while you eat breakfast, I'm going to grab this math book and let's just see. And I'm going to look at it for the first time. Like, how do you feel about that loose? Have you tried it? Does that work? That would, um, make me itchy. <laughs> <laughs> it make that would make me very uncomfortable, very itchy. I'd be, I uh, need a little more organization than that. Yes. And, um, and that's where, how you are, your, you know, as a person comes in as how you're going to teach child, you know, there's some, like you said, there's some moms that are going to wake up and just, Oh, let me take a look at this. And that's fine. But that, did, that, that couldn't work for me. I would go crazy. Um, I need a little more organization. Usually it was Sundays where I'd sit down and have all of the curriculum out and go, okay, this is where we left off. And this is what I think we can cover this coming, this coming week. Yes. Um, and that's that, because if I just, sometimes there's things you open the book and you're like, um, I need an hour of really understanding this math because I haven't taken that math in a long time. And I don't remember it. <laughs> and do my own Google instruction. <laughs> Google Academy. has become a good friend of mine. Uh, so that would not work, especially in the math department. So, and then there's things in, you know, grammar where I'm like, what? is that? Yeah, <laughs> what are you talking about? Right. <laughs> Was I ever well, well, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if people out there think that teachers just have this innate ability to know curriculum through osmosis, but we don't. <laughs> we have to study it first right. and then, right, you have to master it yourself before you can then teach it right. to, someone, to someone else. And, you know, I use the analogy and I'll be curious if you agree with this. It's kind of like um, I, I've had mornings where the bananas on the counter are ripe, right? Mm -hmm. So that means banana bread. Mm -hmm. And there are some days that I'm like, oh, darn, I'm out of eggs. Oh, the oil, we don't have enough oil for it. I'm going to have to go to the store and get it, right? That to me is what it feels like if you're going to try and homeschool and just hope you have what you need and hope that it all works out beautifully. Yeah. But man, that is not going to be a great cooking experience. You're going to get frustrated. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel ill-prepared. Mm -hmm. um, and you might even just like trash it. You might be like, I'm not going to do it. Forget I'm not making banana bread this morning. Yeah. That's what can happen versus you notice the night before that the bananas are ripe. Tomorrow you want to make banana bread. You make sure you have everything. And if you're like, oh, I'm short on eggs, you know, yeah. you go 
grab a dozen eggs that night, it's a fully different experience now making the banana bread because mm-hmm. you've got everything you want and you need. I totally agree. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, yeah. so that's good. We're certainly on the same page mm-hmm. with uh, planning. Now, what are some of the must-haves? What would be some of the things that you would really recommend uh, parents have? Parents. Okay. So like the last two years, we used a, a math program, Singapore math. Yes. And there was a, a section where, you know, in fractions, I was teaching it. He wasn't getting it from me. And so we got a tutor and he was getting it. Um, she, she worded it differently. And sometimes you just need to hear it differently or be right. taught differently. Um, that kind of covered that year. Um, but then there was a program called Singapore Live by a lady named Brenda. Now she was, um, she, I think she contracts with Singapore. Like she is certified in their teaching, how they teach it. Yeah, it is so what, a little different. Yes. It is a little different. So what she does is she makes videos for each lesson um, for the student to log in and she walks through the problems. So what we did was we supplemented. And if we came across a lesson where he wasn't understanding it, or maybe I wasn't, and I felt like, oh, I'm not teaching this correctly. And he's not grasping it. Let's, let's see what Miss Brenda has to say. And we log in and there's companies like that. Um, this year we're going to go with Saxon math. And there's a lady called, um, Nicole, the math lady. So it's the same thing. So she has her own little company and she goes through lessons and teaches kids that way. And then you can also, maybe if you have a question, you can submit it to her and she can explain it to you maybe a different way than mom or dad can. Um, So I think those are great um, things to look for because sometimes you just, yeah. And then the kids get to a point where they, you need them to be a little more independent. Mm-hmm. Okay, go ahead and log in to Miss Brenda or Miss Nicole and see if you can figure it out. And sometimes they do, and you're like, oh, okay, great, let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, those so are some of the things. The, and both, so two things you just said there that I think homeschooling families sometimes see as a weakness. And I'm so glad you brought it up because I think it's a strength of yours, Marissa. <laughs> when you can say, hey, I'm going to resource out you got a tutor Mm -hmm. you found videos with people who have already taught this a million times Mm -hmm. you don't need to recreate the wheel but there are some homeschool moms I will never forget I had done a post um in a group uh, I won't say the name of the group it was a Facebook group though of a lot of homeschoolers and I said hey a new see you know new semester is starting if you would like any help teaching writing you know, I can do that for you. I've been doing it for decades now. I can save you so much time, energy, effort, like, let me help you. And a mom responded back and said, I have been in homeschooling for 25 years and I'm proud to say I have never outsourced anything. I don't think you're truly homeschooling unless you can teach all the things. And, you know, everybody's allowed their opinion, of Mm -hmm. course. And I don't even remember what I said, something like, you know, that's impressive. Good for you. (laughs) For me, (laughs) I'm not going to try and teach my child how to play guitar. I'm going to get a guitar teacher. And and I think about that in life. I'm not going to put new tires on my car. I'm going to go to a professional. I think we're teaching our children Hey, when you want to do something really well, go to somebody who does that really well. Yeah. And there's nothing shameful or wrong about your must have being the ability to say, I need help when mm-hmm. you need help or you're overwhelmed. Or, you know, we talked about it in the one when you're, when you're um, homeschooling multiples, that's mm-hmm. too much for you. At some point, you're going to need yeah. to bring in, you know, the special forces, whether that's. Well, yeah your husband who can maybe take over science or right, like be <laughs> yeah. creative, be yeah. creative, but well, yeah, that's how we came. Alone. That's how we came across you. We just, um, I was so nervous about writing, um, our older son, it was his ugh, so smart, but when it came to writing, he was like, no, 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 <laughs> don't do it. I don't like it. I don't get it. 
And it wasn't until last year, his 12th grade year, did he have his first great teacher who understood him, who got him how he learned and hands down covered so many years that he just went, what? You know, I don't get it. And she's like, you're like my sons. I get you. I'm going to teach you the way I taught them. But yeah, you have to, um, I was nervous about the writing and I had tried other curriculum and that just didn't, it wasn't fitting with him. It wasn't meshing well. I tried, you know, the, the, the circles, with the lines out and who, what, where, and why. And I thought that's the basics, right. Of writing, um, that wasn't working. And so we just kept searching and you came up on our vendor list and I reached out and then I was like, okay. And then I mean, <laughs> our teacher last year, she couldn't wait for our meetings to read what he wrote in for his essays for the month she would it'd be the first thing she turned to she'd be like oh I'm so excited you know <laughs> uh, she, she she raves about it because she knows as a teacher what you give what you offer and it has taken a load off of the parent um you know you are still as a parent I'm still helping him write and do that but you have to be able to um say, Hey, I, I, that's not my expertise and I'm not going to pretend like I can. And I have no shame in saying I need help. And so we're going to, we're going to outsource that one. <laughs> so. Yeah. And, and more, and thank you so much for saying so many sweet things. <laughs> um, and I believe this is, we're going into our third year writing together. And I just mm-hmm. get so excited to hang out with your kiddo. He's, he's dynamite. He has such great personality. And he's so fun. <laughs> um, But I was going to say, like, this is changing as homeschooling is becoming a more acceptable and supported form of education. More resources are coming out Mm -hmm. and people are getting more creative. And I think it's releasing some stress and allowing you to do some of the other things that you really want to do with your kids Mm -hmm. and that you're not feeling as much. And I, and I do, I would say that is kind of out of the box teaching when it's, it's not the typical, um, and I'm so curious in your first year, I have to ask this question in your first year of homeschooling. I don't know if you did what I did. Um, did you imagine like you had to get him to sit in his desk, start at eight o'clock in the morning, right? And then we're going to break for our reset, just like we were in school. Did you first start that? And do you still do it that way? I did first start doing that. It was like, you have to be up by this time. You have to sit at your, I mean, we went and bought a desk, you know, a big boy, you know, an adult desk per se. And, yeah. you know, we got the the, the blackboard, the erase board. I mean, all the things. And I was like, I have a teacher. That's right. <laughs> so I'm going to do it. And that didn't work. <laughs> uh, it was too much. Why was I, we pulled him out for a reason. It was to, um, to have the opportunity to, if he understood things well, we could advance further and faster instead of waiting for the other kids who did, couldn't, or if he wasn't understanding, we didn't have to move forward and we didn't have to follow a schedule. And, um, so the first year for sure, I, I did that. And the second year I was like, no, 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 no. I, I have to remember why I'm, I'm doing this. I am doing this for his benefit and for my benefit and for the overall, and we just changed it. And every year we change it a little bit more. You know, we did too. We would always Every wonder year. it was always a little different than the next year. Mm-hmm. But I will tell you, it was more fun for the boys when like learning happened all throughout our house. Like sometimes we might be doing something in the kitchen, especially if it was like a science minded thing. Um, other times we would be reading on the couch in the living room, mm-hmm. you know, when it was like a shared reading experience. We had a school office space in the the spare bedroom turned into school room. Um, Sometimes they would be in their own bedrooms. Sometimes we'd be outside learning um, just because it was such a gorgeous day. And I think when we go into homeschooling is look, the goal here, of course, is education, but it's also instilling a love for learning. Mm -hmm. And a love for learning doesn't come from sitting in the same seat for six hours a day doing worksheets. Nobody's gonna love learning 
I mean, okay, maybe there's the outliers that are like, I love doing that. Okay, <laughs> hello to the two of you. Right. Um, most, of, <laughs> most of us, the love of learning is being able to be curious, to explore, to be wherever we want to be, learning that new thing, field mm -hmm. trips, lots of field trips. Mm -hmm. You know, as a school teacher, we got one field trip a semester. When yeah. we homeschooled, it was one field trip at least a month. Then COVID hit. But I think we're getting back <laughs> to field trips. I hope we're getting back to field yeah. trips. Are you going to do any field trips this next year? Are you already thinking of some? Um, yeah, the, the charter school actually offers quite a bit. Oh, um, good all over Southern California. So that's nice. And then you can, as you know, a homeschool mom, you can just do whatever you want. <laughs> right. You can go to whatever yes. museum you want. Um, yes. But you know, the nice thing about a charter is you can use your school funds um, to pay for that. So, awesome. so it, it is nice. Yeah. yeah. Fun. <laughs> do you have any that were, what come to mind is some of your most favorites? Do, do any from the past? Um, well, yeah. we were in our first year, the year before COVID hit. Okay. So we didn't, we just wanted to oh, that's true. Yeah. Um, get into the swing of things. So we just did our normal hikes and go up to the mountains or go down to the beach, things like that. Then COVID hit and everything was just virtual or canceled or whatnot and it seemed like last year they started it but then you'd get the cancellation notice like oh there was an uptick in cases yes. so um we're hoping this year now that everything is really settled yes we can really take advantage of let's I go hope you get to i hope you get to because <laughs> they they really are so fun and like i'll run across pictures like we did a kayaking tour down in san diego which was amazing because it just took us through the harbor and showed us all kinds of fascinating whale watching. Like it, there's some, and again, this is that out of the box teaching your, your kids are going to remember so much more mm -hmm. if you're studying ocean life mm -hmm. and then you move in, like, like Marissa's saying, you don't even need a field trip to be organized. You could take a day and go to the beach. Mm -hmm. and find tide pools and then look in the tide pools yep. and bring a science journal. We would do this and then sketch what you see and just sit there and, mm -hmm. oh, it's just such fun stuff. So many things that make it a million times better than just classroom learning. So mm -hmm. good. So good. Um, so what does a typical school day look like for you? I would love to kind of know um, and I know no two are probably the same, but in general, yeah. how do you run yours? Um, we usually just, we get him up at a, at a, by a certain time, um, shower and breakfast. That way you feel good, your belly's full and you're ready for whatever we're going to start. Um, okay. and that's really it. We, you know, I take it by the minute. If, if we usually start with math because it's the longest, mm -hmm. um, in, in the subject area for him. Um, and if after that, if it's taken an hour, let's take a break, yeah. let's take, you know, a break and go get a snack or go outside and ride your scooter for a little bit. And then we'll come back in and get the rest done. Um, but if he's like, no, mom, let's just knock it all out. <laughs> Right. Okay. It's it's up to you. If that's what you want to do. That's great. Yes. And, and again, you know, them having a say. I love that having a say yeah. in their own learning. That's going to yeah. build love of learning. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Because you don't want them to hate it, you know, and you want them to use their voice and mm -hmm. say, "I need a break," or yeah. you know. And when you look at your kid and you can see they need a break, yes. give them that break. You yes. know, it doesn't. You don't have to follow that schedule you yeah. know, and, and they'll learn so much better. And I realized that, you know, the first couple of years, I was like, we'd be stuck on a problem and I would sit there until he could get it. And instead last year, I was like, let's walk away from it. Let's, let's move on. And yeah. then 15 minutes later, we come back and all of a sudden he under, he got it. Yeah. He just, you know, you get, you get caught up in your own brain yeah. and you just need to walk away, you That's know, so as with any situation sometimes in life, but yeah, you just it's kind of by the minute, but definitely up by a certain time, your shower, not sitting around in pajamas. And mm -hmm. even for me, I was doing that. I was like, well, I'm, we're homeschooling. We have my pajamas all day. <laughs> 
but then you don't, you know, it doesn't really, sometimes it doesn't, it works for some people. It doesn't work for other people. It, it, I realized, no, I need to get dressed and put a little makeup on and be yeah. ready, be ready yeah. for the day. Yeah. I, and I'm with you too. We, we were very much routine. There was morning routine. There were some chores to get done before we got started. So yeah, we might not have gotten started till nine or 10 mm -hmm. and it was never a set time. And I, I love that you mentioned that too. It is yeah. kind of a by the minute sort of thing. And, you know, you, you share about how um, they, it, it helps them become more independent mm -hmm. and more responsible for self. Mm -hmm. um, I read an article about, uh, it was a college professor who had said, I love getting college students that were homeschooled. And they were asking, really, why is that? And you might think, well, you know, because they're, you know, more knowledgeable or, you know, they're just better students or something like that. And he said, no, it's because they always raise their hand to answer <laughs> questions because they're used to in home. <laughs> what's the answer here? <laughs> they're the only ones. <laughs> they're the only ones. And so there's just that level of responsibility and, you know, that they know they're going to be held accountable mm -hmm. for understanding and they're not going to slip through the crack. So yeah. therefore they're more confident and they're going to be like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll give that a shot. Mm -hmm. And they're not worried about being wrong. You know, it's just, it's, it's a great confidence that I see built in kids. So good. Yeah. So good. All right. Is there anything else that you wanted to mention? Any other resources we should know about anything like that? Or did we cover everything? Um, I think you need um, parents just need to take advantage of the free resources that are out there. There oh, are good one. so many free resources, um, YouTube videos of any subject you can think of, even sign language. I mean, foreign languages, sign language, math, grammar, um, Pinterest your, boards. Yes. Pinterest um, boards with full lesson plans. Yeah. yeah. There's even, um, a company called the good and the beautiful I it, love them. Christian based. Um, so for us, we can't use our funds for it, but right, you have to pay out of pocket. they offer like for their math, math one through five is free. You can download it oh, and great. have free curriculum and their language arts is the same way. Um, there's, you know, the homeschool.com, they have free resources, worksheets, whatever you could think of, that. it's out there. You just kind of have to do the resource, the research, excuse me, yes. and find it. Um, watch some YouTube moms who homeschool, find out, you know, what worked for them, what didn't work for them. How do they homeschool if you're new to it, um, to figure it out, you know, um, it's not always going to be. I remember watching a mom and saying, oh my gosh, I'm not doing cursive writing or I'm not teaching them typing. I need to do that. No, you need to do what works for your kid. So it's fun to watch other moms who, who post and it's nice to have to, to reference, you know, and say, Hey, I think that'll be, maybe I'll try that. Or, um, yeah, my kid does learn like that. Maybe we should try that math or that language arts. Um, but That's don't funny. be discouraged don't get discouraged. It's, it's easy to get discouraged and think, why am I doing this? Well, you're, you came to it for a reason. You need to follow your heart. Um, you know, and your, your mom or dad gut of why you came to homeschooling, if you're considering it, yes. um, and follow it, you know, it brought you here for a reason and just go with it. It might be hard at first, but you know, it, it gets easier. The yes, and it's easier. okay, right? It's okay for yeah. things to be yeah. hard. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with things being hard. Right. <laughs> and and failure isn't a bad thing. And I think that's something we teach kids too. Like it's okay to fail. It just shows us what we need to work on some more. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, oh, that's some good advice there. <laughs> yes, don't be discouraged. Okay, you gave so much value today, Marissa. I cannot thank you enough for sharing your time and your ideas. And this is so good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being You're here. You're welcome. You're welcome.
Thank you for joining us today. I hope you are feeling encouraged. It's really important in the homeschooling community that you find your people. And hey, we're here to be your people. If you would like to work more closely together and get that group of supportive people behind you, be sure to check things out on my website. You can find me at writeonweb.com. That's right, W-R-I-T-E-O-N-W-E-B-B dot com. And I'll see you there. Right on.